Okay, my uh, welcome to today's session. And the next model that we are going to study is is the M logit multinomial logit model. It is used when your DV is multinomial. Is multinomial. What does it mean? It has more than two categories. Uh, so uh, if the, the, the DV has more than two categories, then it is multinomial. So in this example, what we're doing is our dependent variable is more than two categories. So we are trying to estimate using multinomial plotted model. So I, I'm loading these following libraries that are required to run this model. So I'm estimating this data. Now I'm picking up a data file. Let me show uh, it's, uh, let me read the data file, then I will show you what does it do. So let's come here, read the screen. So this data file is about the response type of a firm. What type of response it gives. So it's, it's not, it's actually the performance from performance increase or decrease with respect to previous year. So RT is response type. Okay. So RT is a variable that actually measures if the, if the performance has increased, it is one. If the performance has not changed, it is zero. If the performance has decreased, it is minus one. And the independent variables include age of a company, total assets, exchange rate, uh, market prices, total production and earning well, uh, uh, earning value. Okay. Okay. So this is the data. So let's come towards. So first of all, we'll look at the nature of the data. So it's shown that few of the variables are characters and others are numeric. Now I have to remove the NAs from the data so that they are not counted as a category. So I've reduced the data. And then there is another variable that is uh, response. Uh, this is a discrete data. So I have, uh, first of all, I'll change its name. Then I will tell that it is a discrete data. It's, it's a data of the, the, the objection uh, in the performance or uh, objection in the reports of the company. So this data is actually, this discrete data is showing us the objections. So I will make it discrete. So let me run it again so that R counts as a discrete variable. Then I will run M logit model, multinomial logit. It is multinom, dependent variable, age, and discrete data. So when I run it, it will store in the R data module that is M logit. When I run it, it will show me uh, the coefficients of all the variables. So there are there is one age variable. And there are seven types, seven types of objections. And the first objection is in the baseline, which in the intercept. And there are two levels of uh, three levels of dependent variable. First level is in the benchmark, and two are here. Okay, so there are two. So let me interpret one of them. So let's see if I interpret. Let me pick some other. So let me pick this number. So the interpretation is. If the age of the company increased by one year, then the chances of the company to perform to company to not to perform as compared to bad performance. So zero means no, no change in the performance. Increases by 0 point, 0 0.014%. So what does it mean is that when the, the dependent variable is zero, it means no change in performance. And the benchmark is minus one, which is bad performance. So 0 0.0014 means that uh, if the age is increased by one year, then the chances to not to perform bad 
uh, not to perform uh, good as compared to uh, as compared to bad performance bad performance increases by 0.1 and uh, secondly i will do this next number which is shown below so if the age of the company increases by one year then the chances to perform good as compared to no performance to as compared to bad performance because the benchmark is minus one increases by 0.0042 percent so this is the way you interpret each number so i have interpreted two so this one and below one so hopefully it is clear to you so let me clear it up and so this way the model is estimated so it has the coefficient values and standard errors but the problem is we need to know but if the variables are significant or not so we will calculate the z values so z values actually uh, take the coefficient values divided by standard errors so in the summary dollar coefficients mean pick up this data and divide it by summary dollar standard errors so it will calculate the z values and then what i will show is if you if you write uh, if you write z here and you, if you tell r to show it it will give you the z values so you can see that only these two variables uh, let me pick a pen so only this variable and this part is significant and these two and this one because the threshold criteria is minus 1.96 comma 1.96 if the values are higher or lower it is significant if it is in between then insignificant so only uh, five variables are significant here this one is marginally significant at 5% level okay so let's move so uh, now we want to see what is the actual level of significance so we we'll do is we will calculate the p values so the formula of p value is that we will do is 1 minus p norm absolute value z so this is a formula to calculate p values from the z values so when i run it it will show, show calculate the p values if i go tell to show the p values so you can see it here is that only 1 2 3 3 of them are significant okay uh, and it's seven yes so let me show it using tick so this is significant 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 so there are five of them which are significant so this way you can confirm the significance now next what i am doing is now we need to plot the chart to see the nature of the uh, effect of these variables so uh, so in this activity we are also learning how to make interactive and informative graphs so what i am doing is is dao so change d means delta and ao means so change in the data so how we make it so uh, ao has seven types and i will pick age as a average age so this is a new data it is it is actually showing the change in the ao and average value of age so it is only showing the change in the ao now i will predict the data using dao and and make it name it props okay so when i run it i have to it will give me probability values okay so let's see if it is here so what is it telling us that when the ao is 1 the probability for minus 1 is this much so these are the probability values now what i'll do is i will calculate change in age and it still you can also predict it using that value so this is the pr prediction using age and this is prediction age and and 
it is calculating the mean value so it is giving me the uh, probability of uh, each level of AO okay then it is uh, then if you see next command it is actually calculating the it is making a table now when I plot this graph let's see what does it show now you can see it here that since the dependent variable has three levels so there are three graphs and the AO has seven levels so in each graph there are seven graphs and age is shown like this so you can notice here is that for each categorical variable which is AO there, there is a different line so what does it mean that if you estimate assuming that AO is a continuous data it will estimate some line in the middle okay but what will happen that but the dots are scattered very far some are here some are with this line some are with this line some are with this line some are here some are here some are here some are here so they are actually depicting their own line but uh, when you run single line you will notice that some dots are scattered above the line some are below the line so this is indicator for presence of hetero because of the independent variable which is discrete okay second you can also notice one more thing that why does why not we run the OLS so if we have estimated the OLS it would have assumed that minus one zero and one are continuous data so you can notice that probability values are very different this from 0.15 to 0.35 this 0.3 to 0.5 this 0.2 to 0.4 so these are actually different lines at different levels so if you run uh, only one equation assuming that these minus one one and zero are continuous so it will also create heteroscedasticity just like for the example of water that we did for logit and probit model 